welcome to the car guys this week we are in the back of the Maybach to answer your questions because the weather is so shockingly bad at the moment pretty much any road tests are out today off but perfect weather for being in the back of a Maybach so earlier today we posed the questions on Instagram said Q&A time guys we haven't done one of these for a while give us some of your questions and we will attempt to make some rational answers <laughs> Welcome to the Maybach. <laughs> I feel like a captain of industry. Heated seat, so we're all nice and cosy in here. We've worked out how to untint the sunroof. Amazing. We've also had a play with all the gadgets in this car, pre-doing the full, obviously, review. I think maybe we could have a little drinky poos later. <laughs> The use of drinky poos unfortunately <laughs> confirms the stereotype that all of you believe. So obviously we've got a fridge in the back of this. Let's have a look in the fridge. Oh, first of all, Ooh. I think we better, you know, there's no point in getting stuff out of the fridge. Solid silver. Yep. Well, uh, Maybach, nice. Lovely. What do you reckon we should be drinking um, today? You know, as the car goes, we're quiet, you know, gentlemen of a certain age. Well, it is a Tuesday. Oh. Hang on. What's Ooh, this? Hang on a minute, what's that? Surely not another Spice Car Radio t-shirt. Amazing. All the best things found in the refrigerators of Maybachs. LPR, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the campest drink I could find. <laughs> Pink champagne. Today is all about your questions and our answers. But first, do you think we should do a wristwatch check? Let's do a wristwatch check. I like that idea. That's good. One of your questions was, why don't you do wristwatch checks at the start of the video? So... Because we can't say wrist rust checks. Yeah, that's, that's mainly the reason. <laughs> yes. So, Jason, what have you what have you got on your wrist? Uh, today I have the latest caliber Batman on Ooh. the Jubilee strap. Look at that. Ooh. It's lovely, isn't it? Beautiful Jubilee strap. And I've got on the very latest Seiko 851, which is the Arnie. So the it's, Arnie. It's known nickname is the Arnie because it's the revised tribute of the 558 from the 80s that Arnold Schwarzenegger wore in like Commando and Predator and all the biggest action films that he was in. This has just been re-released. Okay, happy now? Right, let's get on to the question. Anthony Rajwan. Yep. Writes, would you rather have a 991 Speedster or a 911R in your collection? Uh, 911R for me. Yep, 911R. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. That was easy. That was quick, wasn't oh, it? No, I think we're going to rattle through these. I think we are as well, because, you know, it's going to be easy. 911R, far Why, more though? balanced, far more limited. Well, it's limit more limited, but far more balanced, more of a driver's car for the road. I just think it seems more special to me. Yeah, Speedster feels to me like a little bit of a ball ball. Dan Coma asks, you can only choose one car forever, a Speciale or a TDF? TDF. Really? Yeah. Speciale for me. Really? Yeah, why TDF? It's more flexible. Oh, what you mean chassis? No, as <laughs> awkward. You can get luggage in it. It's got longer legs if you're going to go on longer trips. Yep. I think from a flexibility point of view, if you've only got one car, I think that's probably for me would be the better one. For me, I don't know, there's something special about the Speciale. I just like it. It's more darty. I think it's more usable. Stig underscore photography asks, when are you going to go to Malibu and make use of the open invite on Spike's car radio? When it warms up. Yeah. I mean, next year, 100% the car guys are going on a road trip yeah, yeah. in America, in the sort of Los Angeles area. So I think that's when we'll definitely pop in. Yeah. And Stig Photography also asks... Oh, hang on a minute. Whoa, whoa. He gets a lot of questions, doesn't he? Well, you know, he sends a lot in. He's, he does send He's very a lot active in. He's on all of, of our He's, he's, of our he's one of our guys, yeah. Yeah, let's give him, let's give him an extra we'll one. All right, then. Okay. Can you do another episode with Seen Through Glass? And can you get on the podcast with Mr. JWW? We'd love to do both. Um, just waiting for the invite. <laughs> www.auto asks, what watch are you currently looking to buy? At the moment, I'm massively, massively in love with the white gold Sky Dweller. Ah, what face, I, what color face? Blue face. Yes. God, I just love that watch so much. I'm desperate to get one. However. They're quite hard to get hold of. They, a, they're quite hard to get hold of, which means that second hand, they are huge amounts yeah, over yeah. the top, which I'm not paying over the top for. For me, it's gonna have to be the solid gold Daytona with the green face. That's the one. Oh, is that what that's, you're hunting for? That's the one that I'd like more than anything. Robert Denton asks, will the 750i be fixed or has this Maybach 
taken its place. Note the 750 will be fixed. It's currently missing a wing mirror, which I've been very slow at trying to find one. So if you've got an E38 passenger side wing mirror, preferably in silver, please let me know. But I need to get that done. It needs to be MOT'd, uh, needs to be taken off of Sawn, and, uh, and it probably needs the wrap taken off it as well, just uh, so that I can give it a, a thorough spring clean and a spruce. Oh, and it needs a big service as well. So quite a lot to be done with that one. The Dan Marshy, hello, the Dan Marshy, he's, uh, he's given us a question before. Has the pedal issue on your Spider put you off a Porsche? Now I'm assuming that's directed at me uh, because I have a pedal issue on my Porsche. You do mm. have a massive pedal issue on the Spider. I would say it's not put me off Porsche, but I am extremely disappointed that a shitty rubber galosha with a thin piece of metal on it is what Porsche calls Aluminium sports aluminium, pedals. Aluminium sports pedals. That's not my idea of aluminium sports pedals, my friend. When are you getting your Carrera GT? A bit presumptuous, isn't it? Matt? It's tricky, actually, the Carrera GT conundrum, because there's a lovely one for sale over at Octane at the moment. Yep. For some monies. So that's the 65,000 mile one. So it's been used. It's, you know obviously been running properly it's you know, been it's well been maintained very well maintained it was crashed in a, early in its life it was but you know rebuilt porsche certified i believe so it's all fine yep it, but it is at least two hundred thousand pounds less than an equivalent car that's got maybe only five or six thousand miles on it yes so if you're in the market for a carrera gt you want to be able to drive it are you going to go to 65,000 or are you going to go to 5,000 and lose 50 grand every time you take it out of the garage? I mean, 65,000 miles is a lot. Yes. I don't think mileage, I don't think it's that sensitive to mileage. You don't think so? No, I, I think you could buy one that's done 5,000 miles and I reckon you could probably do 15,000 miles in it. And you should be all right. And not lose a colossal amount because I think the the sheer appreciation curve of that car will overtake it. Will way overtake it. But definitely. That's a car we've got our eye on, as do, mm. as do a few other people. But we are going to experience that car very soon. Very soon. So stay tuned on the channel for that. Andrea Mellin writes, What do you think of the new electric hypercars and the EV world in general? This, uh, is, a, this is a trap. This is basically it, a trap. It's basically a trap. Because we're going to say, uh, Oh, I quite have... like EV. And they're going to go, How come you've got so many V12 gas governors then, you <laughs> Well, okay, let's uh, let's have some rational thought. Oh, hello. And now begins a party political broadcast <laughs> on behalf of the oh, gas guzzling nice. party. <laughs> I think EV's a bandwagon. Everyone's jumped on it. Everyone's going, oh, yeah, we can be super green and super friendly. They forget the fact that they need a cocking great big boat to bring the buggers over here. Some of you that have written comments on our sort of social media uh, about this issue are talking about how, you know, how can we shamelessly flaunt these, you know, terrible MPG type cars. You are missing the big picture because the cars are not the issue. There are many, many bigger issues than this and you should be focusing on that. Namely, aircraft. Namely, freight shipping. Mm. Okay? Yeah, you still want your washing machines. You still want all your goods, don't you? Delivered at a nice cheap price from Amazon, don't you? And I but, was going off on a rant. But where do you think... <laughs> But where do you think they come from? They go on ships, which are the worst polluting thing on the planet. Yeah, You've yeah. also got ludicrous power stations going up all over the place to supply more electricity for your little fancy cars. Mm. Don't mind sticking coal out of the thing, do you? Hey, burning oil like it's going out of fashion. All right, all right. <laughs> so what we say to that is, in summary, you're looking in the wrong place. Your focus should be in lots of other areas. Deforestation, for example, which is causing far more of an effect. Uh, animals which produce far more of an effect and of course power stations and shipping how about we get rid of all cruise liners for a start eh? but you're not talking about those are you you're talking about cars because they're a nice soft target however after that little let's take a deep breath yeah, i'm can. not sure i think andrea just meant what do you think of them as vehicles all I... the passion that defines a supercar or a hypercar is immediately sucked, sucked. out when yeah. you talk about it Absolutely. being electric so they're, they're a non-thing obviously we are quite skewed towards fossil fuels Obviously. at the moment. But I think if I did move towards an electric car as part of the fleet, yeah. it would be the Porsche Taycan. Yeah, I think that's. I think that they are the new, the new benchmark for EV. Does that answer your question, Andrea? This is a good one. Okay. Tom Lucas says, 
Do you think McLaren and Ferrari are making a mistake releasing so many new models? Oh, that's a bloody loot there. Yes. Honestly, why? Yes. Why are they releasing yes. so many new models? This is profiteering. There is, they've seen that there's lots of people out there with lots of money and they've gone, we can feed that market. We're going to kick. I mean, just to just today, McLaren took the trousers down of everybody that bought a 600 LT, bent them over the desk Woo. and shafted them. With a 620R. I mean, what were you thinking? We've mentioned it on this channel. We've talked about it. We've gotten a bit of hot water for talking about it. But, you know, we are customers first and foremost. We're customers, we're owners, and we happen to also talk to you fine people. So for us, yes, it's definitely an issue. It definitely puts us off McLaren, puts us off buying McLarens. On the Ferrari side, it's definitely having an effect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely make me want less Ferraris and I never thought I'd say that. What podcast do you listen to other than Spike's Car Radio? And this is from The Pod Filter. Collecting cars when it's around. Chris Harris. I mean, you know, that is Edward Lovett. It's a given. Yeah, um, love that one. Uh, I like listening to Car Chat. Yeah, that's quite that's good. A, that's a good, fun, informative podcast. I really like that one. Yeah, Car Cast with Adam Carolla. Also The Smoking Tyre. The Matt, Matt Farah. Obviously. Scottish Watches podcast. Big fan of that. Yeah, that's pretty good. On the watch side. Ever consider a 997 GT3 manual a bargain in my opinion? Yes, a bargain in everyone's opinion, I think. Mm. Would so, absolutely yes. love one of those. You'd actually. be mad not to. It's yeah, an absolutely was an, incredible yeah, car. Completely. Royd Evans, what drives you to live your life on YouTube? We don't live our lives on YouTube. Yeah, we really don't. It. We barely. barely on it. We barely. You can hardly see him. We like being. <laughs> what drives you to live your life on YouTube? To be honest, you guys, you guys do because the feedback and you know meeting you at uh, shows, events, and sometimes out in the wild. You know the comments, all the comments you leave, all the feedback that you've got on the things we do. That's what really drives us on. It's you know? just really nice meeting people hmm. and going out. And I think we discovered that the first time we ever discovered that was the first Geneva show we went to about two and a half years ago. Yeah. And a couple of really nice chaps. Well, I think we'd only put out about half a dozen videos. We had barely any subscribers. They come up to us and said, "We love your videos. It's really good." And that was such an inspiration. Yeah. Just makes you want to go out and do more and and kind of engage you guys. That's why we always like, ask for the comments, because we want to know what you like about what we do and, and give us suggestions for new stuff. Dylan.Kane, any update on the F40 replacement? No, because he's getting it back. <laughs> he's not replacing it. It's all just been a big joke on me. Ha ha, ho ho ho, laughs. There isn't an update at the moment, but there will be one soon. So the next update will be the announcement and possibly specking mass 77 bauer writes have you ever considered heavily modifying a sports or supercar yeah literally every day <laughs> literally every day i have got sitting, essex essex i've got sitting on my driveway at the moment a very old what 2004 mini cooper s which i am planning on when i get some time stripping the hell out of it new engine uprating the engine new suspension turning it into kind of like a GP type car, sequential gearbox, Ooh. two bucket seats, roll cage, the whole, like like a tarmac specialist car. So yes, every single day of my life. And for me, no. no. <laughs> Toby von Schneidau asks, if you had to recommend one racing event to watch in person, what would it be? Le Mans 24 hour. Oh, interesting. Or, or can I have two? Top fuel drag race at Santa Pod. And I would say... Nürburgring, isn't that a 24 hour 24 hours of Nürburgring? Yeah. That would be the one for me. DJ Wilson 82, have you ordered an Aston Martin Valkyrie? No, of course not. No. Do, do you know how much money those things are? Well, there's that. Plus also, we weren't even offered an Aston Martin Valkyrie. Oh yeah, there is that. That's, that's the main reason. That is the main However, a friend of the car guys has got one coming. Mm. And so we're kind of hoping that maybe he lets us have a go in it. You never know your luck. Matteo van den Streiser asks, will you ever buy a Ferrari in Rosso Dino? Now, that's a very specific question, Matteo. I assume you're Dutch and therefore you like orange cars, which is why you ask that. So the answer is probably not. It's a brave choice, I think, to go with it. I think certain cars would look good in it. I think a 488 looks brilliant in Rosso Dino. I love Rosso Dino. 
Oh, there you go. I mean, orange is just a brilliant colour. So yes, bigger the better. FF. You thought Ross Odino was the big bloke in Game of Thrones. <laughs> I did. This is a question written specifically for Jason. Oh, here we go. George Brett, double O, asks, would you ever want to own a Group B rally car? Yes. Next question. <laughs> T. Norton Photo asks, now I've driven the Speciale Aperta, can I drive the Pista Spider? No. Y yes. Yes, you can. Go on. No, no, he can't. Because it's you, Tom. Because it's you. He can't. Why? Because we haven't bloody got it. Oh, yeah. We haven't got and it And we're yet. never going to get it, are we? We? Got, we are going to get it. Because based on the Ferrari's delivery programme for the Superfast, which is now in its third year of asking, <laughs> we are literally never going to get it. Koenig Cars asks quite a good question, actually. What car were you happiest to sell? What, out of all of our car yep. ownership, what whatever. Did, what did we have the most joy selling? I think the uh, the first Fiat Strada I bought, I was quite glad to see the back of that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. For me, I reckon it was probably the Bentley Continental R that, that I bought mistakenly at auction. Oh, the pink one. And actually was the first car that we did as the video a one. video for the yeah. car guys. So if you go all the way back to the start... 130 don't, odd videos. Don't, don't do that. It's good. It's still good. Is it? Yeah. That pink Bentley is probably the one I was happiest to because I thought I was going to stuck with that forever. <laughs> I thought we stuck with it forever. We all did. Yeah. <laughs> would you ever buy a Maserati? I would. I have a I have a bit of a soft spot for the um, Gran Turismo. Oh yeah, it's a lovely car. Four seats, gorgeous shape, lovely noise. However, I would also like to say that Maserati servicing bills are. Indus. I used to own a Maserati. I had a Grand Sport, and that was a beautiful car. So. I always fancied a bi-turbo when I was much oh, younger. Awful, awful car. But yeah, I mean, they are boxes of bolts. Tom Hutchinson writes, thoughts on the new Defender? Okay. I think you may have some thoughts on this. I have some thoughts on this. Number one, I like the way it looks. Yep. Number two, I love the tech. Yep. Number three, I love that 90 with the three seats across the front classic old Land Rover move, perfect. Is that the, the 90s, the short wheelbase The short wheelbase one. Short wheelbase one. Yeah, I'm all over that. Different seat configurations. I love the fact you can get those adventure packs that pock on the side yeah. and the snorkels and, you know, street, literally ticking every single one yeah. of those boxes. Might as well have just gone in his mind and made a car. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. However. Oh, oh, there's a but. The but is, how much? <laughs> Seriously? Are they quite a lot? £80,000 <sighs> for a 110. Eighty thousand pounds. Yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? Twenty grand extra. Yeah. You're buying a Range Rover. MRM Carp One writes, "What's your honest opinion of the Porsche Seven One Eight Turbo engine?" Just watch, watch, watch our episode, our video on the, our episode yeah. on the on the on the box. But if you design the engine or you work for Porsche, don't 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 watch, watch that. Don't. If you if you are dyed in the wall Porsche Boxster lover, also don't don't watch it. Yeah. It's, it's not it's not pretty no spoiler alert it's terrible dj wilson 82 also writes and it seems like he's got a bit of an aston martin fetish going on here okay nothing wrong with that he says are you going to add an aston martin to the collection no. hang on think about oh. it are you going to add an aston martin to the collection no okay well see he's thought about it yeah the super Legera is nice i can't still can't get over the looks of the vantage the dbx obviously looks great if you're looking for something to chuck the family into but there's nothing on the horizon put it that way no however we were offered the valhalla we were offered that but there was and i think that i think the auction's already gone now i think it was the auction you watched mm. they did have a manual dbs well yes and that, that that, that I it. could be that. persuaded. For. Sorry, we've had, we've had to start the engine because we've been draining the battery with all the lights and stuff. Awkward. Final question from Lucas Zanchet. One, he says, you will like this one. Okay. Good. Who is the better Formula One driver, Senna or Schumacher? Oh, controversial question. Tss. Senna. Yeah, I think it. I think it is Senna. Thanks for sending in the questions. Hope you enjoyed the answers. We had fun doing it. Please subscribe, leave comments and likes. We do read every single one. Ding that notification bell for when we've got another episode uploaded. And check us out on Instagram. There's loads of photos on there. See you on the next one.